Hey gang, it's Rob, and in this video, I'm gonna help you pass Security Plus step by step. Hey gang, it's Rob from icmuskie.com, and my job is to help each and every one of you guys and girls get certified. So in this video, I'm gonna take you step by step with what you need to do and what you need to know to pass Security Plus. So if you're thinking about getting into cybersecurity, a lot of people go for the Security Plus. The Security Plus is an entry to mid-level certification and it's actually the number one most popular certification for the Department of Defense. The Security Plus goes over a bunch of different cybersecurity related topics. So if you go through this roadmap, if you follow this step by step, you should be a lot better off when it's time to take the exam. The first thing that you need to be proficient at, the first thing that you need to really be good at is threats and vulnerabilities. The first thing you need to be concerned with when it comes to threats and vulnerabilities is social engineering. So social engineering is a really big word that basically means people being nosy, right? People being nosy, trying to figure out information about you and your organization trying to figure out things, places, passwords, routes, times, schedules, anything that they can use to use information against you and your organization. So the type of social engineering attacks you may be aware of or may not be aware of can be phishing, which can be people just literally phishing for information, but instead of spelled with an F, it's spelled with a P. So it's literally somebody fishing for information. And like I said, social engineering is usually somebody that comes under the guise that I'm here to help, I'm your buddy, we're friends, everything is okay, just so they can get as much information as possible out of you to use it against you later on. Now, fishing is just one of the ways that somebody can social engineer you and get information out of you. They can use shoulder surfing, they can use dumpster diving, they can use so many different techniques to get information out of you, or if you're the boss of all bosses, how to get information out of your team members and out of your employees. But long story short, you have to figure out ways to prevent social engineering. You gotta make sure that the team, the people that are around you, are proficient at social engineering. So social engineering is gonna be one of those topics that you're gonna to need to know to pass the exam. The next thing you're gonna need to know is types of attacks. Is it a malware attack? Is it a physical attack? Is it a ransomware attack? What type of attack? And then we need to know what the attack is and then what is the main purpose? Is it trying to steal information? Is it trying to steal information and then duplicate it and use it elsewhere? Is it trying to change the information? Is it trying to delete the information? Okay, so you need to basically know all different types of malware, whether it is a worm, a Trojan, a rootkit. You need to know all these different things to be proficient when it comes to the exam. So just remember that every topic on this exam is going to be talking about cybersecurity. So you have to be super proficient in knowing different types of attacks. What the attack is, what it's actually going to do, right? Another thing is not just knowing the definition, but okay, if somebody actually pulls this attack off, what's going to actually happen? And then when attackers or hackers or whoever, when they usually use these types of attacks, what are they usually looking for? What is usually the payoff, right? So that is another thing that you need to know is types of attacks. Once again, you need to know what is the attack actually doing? Is it specific to applications? Is it specific to networks? Is it specific to websites? Is it specific to people? Okay, so not only knowing about attacks in a broad sense of the word, but knowing about attacks in a super focused way, right? So just remember that whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, there's somebody trying to get you, right? So that's kind of how you have to look at it when you are in cybersecurity. The next thing you need to know is about threats and the type of threat actors that are out there. So 
when you're in cybersecurity, when you're trying to take the actual exam, when you're in the real world as well, you need to know what kind of motivates different people. Is it political? Is it financial? Is it just, they just a hater and they hate you? Uh, what is the actual motivation of a threat actor? Why are they taking these actions? So you gotta figure out those things, so threat actors. And not only do you need to have a good portfolio, a good background of the threat actors and what they're doing, what they're doing, but you need to actually figure out what they're actually doing and where they're getting information from, right? So is it open source intelligence? Is it just something that they can Google or are they just finding out stuff on Facebook, on Reddit, so on and so forth? Or is it like closed off proprietary information? Is it confidential information? You need to figure out where are they actually getting their information? So as you keep on building this stuff out, you will actually be able to figure out, okay, this is what threat actors do. This is their motivation and this is where they usually get their information from.